Hi, good morning. I'm here with Professor Dan Katzin. How are you? Good morning. Okay, would you like to give the machine a little twirl? Okay. Okay? Yes. People call this the chaos machine. Can you give it a better twirl? A better twirl. Yeah. No, you don't like my twirl. I like your twirl. Okay. Is, right. this, is this really a chaos machine? Um, yeah, probably. Close enough. Okay. How would you explain chaos to somebody who's never studied it? Well, first I'd explain what isn't chaos. Okay. Okay, so we have a reference thing. And uh, many systems are, um, are well behaved in the sense that uh, if you observe them for a little while, you kind of understand what they're going to do. And not only do you know what they're going to do, but if you have another system, similar system, next to it, and uh, you start them the same way, they'll behave the same way. A chaotic system is a system that's very sensitive to what's called initial conditions. If you take two, a chaotic system, you take two systems, one right next to each other, and you start them off almost with the same conditions. You just miss by, say, a tenth or a hundredth or a millionth. It doesn't matter really how much. As long as you're not exactly on the same initial conditions, you start the thing running and soon enough, each is going to be doing something else. And a perfect example is the weather. You have the weatherman on TV coming and telling you, oh, tomorrow is going to be a sunny day and then it rains. How can it be that they've got satellites and machines and computers and all over the world communications and they miss? How can that be? Okay, but maybe that is because we're both scientists, so maybe that's because they do not have the right parameters in hand to start with. That's right. And so they miss. Okay, so Instead of having the exact initial conditions, they didn't take into account the fact that my son, my five-year-old son, peed next to a tree over there and changed the humidity. And so this part of the initial conditions was not available to the computers in which they ran their models. Mm -hmm. And so their models didn't take this initial condition okay, so into he, so account. So this is the question. So people are going to ask you, is there really chaos or is it just something that is based on our inability mm -hmm. to take everything into that, consideration? That's what chaos is. A chaotic system means that uh, you have a system that is very sensitive to initial conditions. If you know the initial conditions exactly, then the system will repeat itself every time exactly. Okay. So but if you yeah. don't, mm -hmm. then forget it. It's going to behave differently sooner or later and mm -hmm. very differently. So, so coming back to our chaos machine here, which mm -hmm. uh, Hagai Cohen brought the, donated to the campus. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if, if I could predict exactly how much energy and the, and the, and the, the speed, whatever, right. the torque, then uh, we could predict this trajectory or not. Yes. You could. But according to what you told me, you can't really because you don't know how much humidity is there and you don't know. If you don't know the initial the conditions, the look, the initial conditions, we can, we can model this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a real system, and so you have to worry about, about friction and about all sorts of things and the unevenness of this, of this rod that mm -hmm. might not be uniform rods. <clears throat> if you take this to, a, to an ideal system where you can model it with a computer, no. okay? then the initial conditions don't inc include things like humidity and other things, okay? The initial conditions for a physical system have to do with the initial velocities and initial positions of the system. And then, if you know them exactly, the system will behave exactly the same way. Okay, and so if you don't know yeah. them exactly, forget it. Okay, so I guess that my, my last question on this, uh, this uh, brief course on chaos mm -hmm. is the following. So what you're saying is if we had exactly the same instrument over here, mm -hmm. right, and you applied exactly the same torque and the same kinetic energy and so on, then they would, can you give it a twirl for our audience? Then they would behave exactly the same. If, if you could reproduce the initial conditions, yes. Uh -huh. So then really there is no chaos. No, there's that's, that's, a, there's, uh, that's the definition. To predict things. That's the definition of chaos. Ah, our that's, that's our de look. The word chaos is used uh, colloquially, okay, in all sorts of ways. But chaos in, in science or in mathematics has a very specific technical definition. It's like the word work, right, or, or, or energy, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so, it's actually, so, so, the, so it's the, the public doesn't understand chaos then. Because what you're telling me is there's no such thing really as chaos in the sense of not being, being able to predict something when you have an ideal system and you have all the right parameters. It's our inability to predict things 
when we don't have the parameters in a real world? Well, the parameters isn't the right word. It's the initial conditions. Okay. Okay. So as long as you don't have the exact initial conditions, then you can't predict the future behavior over a long time of a chaotic system. Thank you very much, Professor Katsin. And the last twirl, and this has been a very short interview on the art and science of chaos.